Okay. Uh, hi. Ignore the not well lit messy background. I didn't plan on making a video right now. I was actually tired, <laughs> ready to go to bed, having streamed and already edited the Sephiroth video. Uh, but this is an absolutely uh, insane turn of events for Cyberpunk 2077 because it has just been removed from the PlayStation Store. Okay. So what we have here is the official statement from PlayStation. Uh, Cyberpunk 2077 refunds. SIE strives to ensure a high level of customer satisfaction. Therefore, we will begin to offer a full refund for all gamers who have purchased Cyberpunk 2077 via the PlayStation Store. SIE will also be removing Cyberpunk 2077 from the PlayStation Store until further notice. Once we've confirmed that you purchase Cyberpunk 2077 via the PlayStation Store, we will begin the processing your refund. Uh, please note that completion of the refund may vary based on your payment method and financial institution. Who? Wow. Um, right now on Twitter and all that right now. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, like No Man's Sky is trending and stuff like that. Because, I mean, games like No Man's Sky or Fallout 76, this never happened to them before. Terrible launches. Customers weren't satisfied. They felt like they were betrayed, lied to by advertising, all sorts of stuff. Very similar, uh, you know, in certain regards to the nature of the Cyberpunk 2077 launch. But in all honesty, in certain ways, Cyberpunk was a bit more egregious because they hid the evidence of it, you know, like a, like a kid who wet the bed and didn't want to show the sheets of the PlayStation four gameplay. Uh, but here we are and refunds are being issued for this game. I think this was the right thing to do, but I honestly did not expect them to do it. I thought Sony would have rather had just taken the, slightly slight of the social hit of like you know the the social you know pressure of uh, uh being the company that would not issue the refund and being like hey well it's cyberpunk's fault and then just call it a day but no they did the right thing <laughs> they actually did the right thing and are issuing a full refund i mean even on playstation 5 right for me the game crashed 40 times 40 four, four, oh, 40 times in four days it crashed every 30 minutes and then it switched every hour and then it switched back to every 30 minutes and then maybe every two hours and i did different things like start a new playthrough and that's like okay well then now now it started to i did 20 hours in one playthrough and i was like okay let me switch over and i'm like okay this playthrough is not crashing as much but then kept crashing kept getting worse kept getting worse uh, i mean the game is just not finished it's just genuinely not finished and i was able to get a refund through a different route of contacting Sony customer support, but had to go through so many bells and whistles that I was on the phone for 40 minutes, two days ago with PlayStation customer support, arguing with them, telling them that, uh, this game falls under their policy for their return because it is a faulty product. And if it is a faulty product, even if it was downloaded digitally and you played however many hours of it, you could still get a refund because it is a faulty product. And, yeah, it, that took me so much time just to be able to get a refund a couple of days ago. But I'm so glad uh, people who are not satisfied with their version of the game are going to be able to get their copy uh, refunded. That's great. Uh, but this is just, man, this is disastrous. This is, there's no other way of putting it. And this is not hyperbole, hyperbole. This is truly a disastrous situation because... Not even mentioning the loss of the trust that was built up ever since they launched The Witcher 3 and, and you know, that, that hype and, like, their love from the game community has all just been withered away. And on top of the stuff with the game with from China and them bowing down to the Chinese government and not putting a game on GOG. But on top of all of that, I mean, they're... <laughs> their stocks just dropped it by like 33%. And that was only like 24, 48 hours ago. 
like their shareholders are not happy. Like you have to, you have to really think about it from that perspective of you spent a bunch of money to fund this game and to keep funding this project and to fund the marketing for it. Right. And the development of this single project just in and of itself goes on for eight years. All right. Keeps getting pushed back, keeps getting pushed back. There's a date keeps getting pushed back. There's a, you know, internal communication strife. Uh, we know that, uh, they were not properly communicating the, the head of the studio, like Adam Krasinski, whatever his name is. Um, he was not properly communicating, it seems, to the shareholders based off of their calls, uh, the actual process of how things were going with the development of the game. And the shareholders were kind of like left in the dark on what was happening and just had faith that they would actually deliver on the product. But here we are and shareholders are not happy because they just had the call. I think it was yesterday. Uh, the share emergency share, shareholder call asking, what are you going to do to get the game back on track? What are you going to do to make sure we keep making more money? What does this do to affect our DLC plans? Like we are, we are bleeding money in stocks. What is happening? Like, we don't like this at all whatsoever. Whatever is happening, you need to fix it. Like just getting back the development cost is not enough, right? Just getting down the initial down payment of this is how much the game costs to make is not enough. We're also talking about marketing. We're also talking about uh, the stockholders and the shareholders and what they want to make. And then you have the financial records and what they want to make each year. And this is not a good situation at all whatsoever. People are pissed because the last thing you need right now, PR wise is to be the game that got removed from the PlayStation store and maybe even the Microsoft store, who knows, depending on what happens next, right? Like who knows what will end up happening next? Like what will go next? I don't know. Like this is crazy. Absolutely insane. Um, yeah, but, it, uh, I, and a lot of people are asking, how did this happen? Right? Like how did it get this bad and get, th get through? But based off of the emergency shareholder call that was held yesterday, uh, from what it seems like, that same question was asked to the CEO of CD Projekt Red or whatever. And basically what they said was that PlayStation and Sony, they had faith in them. That's why the game made it through the review process. They had faith that the... CD Projekt Red was going to, whatever issues that were presented to them were going to be fixed by launch in a day one patch. And that the game that was presented, the CD Projekt Red was going to have everything fixed by the time the game launched and that they trusted them to put out the best quality product possible. So for them to pull that from the store after this statement's been said, that is not good. That is not good. Because I don't know if this leads to fines or something like that, or if it leads to maybe even restructuring of the review process. Cause it's like, how does a game that big of that caliber make it through the review process at Sony and to hear that it was just kind of blind faith in the company into putting out a good product. Uh, who knows what that spells for the relationship between CD Projekt Red and PlayStation or the relationship between CD Projekt Red and Microsoft or the actual review process over at Microsoft and at PlayStation for letting these go through. It's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. And, it, and for them to downplay the situation of saying the game's not unplayable because the game actually starts is total BS. I don't consider 40 crashes playable. Right. I don't consider 15 frames per second playable in that regard. It, it's just, mm. I mean, there's just no excuses for this. They blatantly lied. They blatantly misled people and they blatantly altered the review process to make sure one, that they got a good Metacritic score two, uh, that all the, uh, uh, gameplay footage that was being seen were highly optimized, high-end PC rig gameplay with RTX on and all this sort of stuff. 
And it's absolutely insane. Uh, it's There's just no excuse for it. Especially when there are massive, complex open world games like Red Dead Redemption 2 that still work just fine on the same pieces of hardware. And this game, announced way before Red Dead Redemption 2, was always intended and always has been a current-gen console game and a PC game. So... There's, there's no excuse in that regard. There's just absolutely no excuse for the game to came, come out the way that it did. So, it's insane. It's absolutely insane. Uh, let, me guys, let, uh, let me know what you guys think about all this in the comment sections down below. Uh, and if you have a PlayStation copy of the game, are you going to get your refund now since it's guaranteed? Hey. Let me know. Let me know. All right, guys. I'm going to edit this, upload this, and then you're going to watch it. And I'm going to bed. Don't forget to get geeky.